In a shocking turn of events, a group of home sellers in South Carolina are appealing the settlements of Remax Anywhere and Keller Williams. So what does this mean? What exactly are they appealing? And is this going to push out the date that we actually have to abide by the new rules in the settlements? And what does this mean for your business? I'm going to cover all of this. I'm going to break it all down right here in this video. And at the end, I want to share with you an idea a business model that I believe most agents are going to move over to once the new rules do come into effect. But first, I want to address a couple of questions that came from an email that I sent out last week. Let me read the email to you here. Although the new rules being forced on real estate agents on August 17th are unconstitutional through their blockage of home sellers' freedom of speech by preventing them from communicating about offering a buyer agent commission, even if they wish, we can't stop these new rules from coming into effect. Therefore, we must find the silver lining opportunity within this injustice. And here it is. Starting August 17th, we will not show a single home to a buyer without a contract in place stating how much we will be paid. Which means that unless a buyer has signed a piece of paper agreeing to pay us, we will not spend an ounce of energy showing them a house. This will create a new level of efficiency within your individual business. And any deals you may lose from the new rules, you will more than make up for with this newfound efficiency we never knew we needed. Leave your fear and anxiety at the door. Welcome the new world with open arms and continue building your business and influence to the moon. As the market rebounds from this suppressed market, with the largest flood of pent-up demand that we have ever seen, your business will 10x. God bless. That's the email that I sent out last week. And if you want to join my email list, I'll put a link in the description of this video for you to go do so. I had a lot of responses to this email. I'm going to read two of them to you and address them. Ricky, I'm a little confused by your statement of if buyers have not signed a piece of uh, uh, signed a paper agreeing to pay us, we will not show them a home. I thought we were going to be contacting the listing agent to find out if the seller is offering a buyer agent com compensation. And if they are, then we will show them that home. Could you please comment on this? Thank you. I will comment on this. So part of the settlement, part of the new rules is that you can't show a home in person or virtually without a buyer agency agreement in place stating your fees. Right. And that's the biggest difference. A lot of agents say, oh, well, I've been doing buyer agency agreements for years now. I've never shown a house without a buyer agency agreement. Great. That's then you're way ahead of the game. But the difference is going to be that on this buyer agency agreement in the new world, it's going to state what your commission is. It's also going to state that if the seller does not pay that, right, if they don't agree to that, you know, if they haven't already a, a predetermined amount that they want to uh, pay or uh, that they're offering, or if we can't get it negotiated into the deal, you, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer, will be paying that. That's what this new agreement is going to say. So it's great that you've been doing it, but it's going to be a little different moving forward. Yes. So it's going to be mandatory that they sign this piece of paper saying that if the seller doesn't, is, doesn't pay us, then you're going to pay us. Um, and you, you know, we have to have that sign before we show a house, we will still reach out to the listing agent to see if they are in fact offering a buyer agent commission. It won't be on MLS, which is the craziest thing, right? We, you, know, you can't put it on MLS. You can put it everywhere else. You can put it on your website You can put it on, you know, advertisements and marketing. You can tell everybody, but you just can't put it on MLS. Why? I don't, I don't understand that. Why can you put it everywhere else? but not on MLS. This is strange times we're moving into. Nevertheless, this is what we're going to have to deal with. Show me what the new rules are and watch me crush it. I will learn the new system. So, you know, once we identify the properties the buyer wants to see, we send emails and call and reach out to the listing agents to see what, if in fact, any buyer agency uh, commissions they're offering. OK, that addresses that question. Another statement here was what buyer is going to want 
to afford, want or afford to pay a buyer agent commission. So we add this financial burden to their already high interest rates, HOA fees, maybe solar fees, and list goes on. This is bull. This will fail. Yes, no buyer is going to want to afford it. Do they want to pay for a lawyer when they go to court? No, but they do it. Why? Because they need it. And I think that as time goes on, there's the argument that buyers don't need agents. I think that as time goes on and you take agency away from some of these buyers that go directly to the listing agents, they're going to find out real quickly it's the same thing as going into court with no lawyer. Um, that wasn't actually the one I wanted to share right here. This is the one I wanted to share. What happens to that very nice, well-intentioned first-time buyer, right? first-time home buyer who just can't afford to pay anything? Right, They can barely pay closing costs. Would love your thoughts on this. Here's my thoughts on this. Those buyers are the exact buyers that this these policies are going to hurt the most. The ones that are first-time home buyers. So obviously, since it's the first time, they have no experience. They don't know what they're doing. They need an agent the most. But yet, they're probably going to be in a position where they can afford it the least. These are the people that this, these new policies are going to hurt uh, at the highest level. Here, Here's... Here's the thing, though, is that what can we do about it? These a lot of some of these buyers are going to go directly to the listing agent. Now, I believe that we're going to be in a world where 90 plus percent of sellers are going to continue to offer buyer agent commissions. Now, you'll learn in the article that I'm about to read you that the DOJ, they don't even want that at all. They don't want that at all. Can you believe this? They literally want to remove the option for a seller to offering a buyer agent commission, even if they want to, right? This is insanity. This is, this is insane. Let's move right into this article. Sellers appeal Keller Williams anywhere and Remax settlements. The home sellers object that the deal's payout is far too low for the massive number of injured parties and that franchisees should be required to implement practice changes, okay? So the first part of this, sellers object that the deal's payout is far too low. Now, I mean, look, here's the deal. We, we did a couple studies. We, we broke out a calculator. We tried to figure this thing out based on what a normal lawyer fee is um, and how many plaintiffs were actually involved in these cases. And we came out to somewhere like $20, per seller and that was before lawyer fees that's before lawyer fees um there's a lot of different you know there's speculation there right how's all this going to break down and and and, and etc but you're looking at a very very minimal like what 10 20 30 bucks something like that like it, it, it it's insane right lawyers so so the total of the settlement is up to around a billion dollars a billion dollars and they're not done around a billion dollars. So if a lawyer fee is 30 to 40%, which is normally the case, you're looking at three to $400 million. And then you got 600 million uh, some odd dollars divided by all the plaintiffs. Um, comes out to be like 10, 20, $30 uh, per, per injured party. So I can see what their argument is. I, 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 I yeah, this is like, did you not think this through? Did you did you think you were like gonna get like your commission back or something like that? Okay, so let's let's dig in here. Calls are piling up to overturn the district uh, court's final approval of nationwide settlements to resolve antitrust claims against major uh, real estate franchisors anywhere. Keller Williams and Remax. So if you notice, NAR is not in here. NAR is not one of these. These these plaintiffs are coming back at just the franchisors, the Anywhere, Kell Williams, and Remax at this point. On July 1st, um, a law firm which represents South Carolina home sellers in a commission suit filed in November filed a notice of appeal in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Missouri. The notice informed the court that the firm's clients, home sellers, and it says the names of the home sellers there, there's four of them, would look into the 8th uh, U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals to reserve a decision from the judge of the, and this is Judge Stephen Bro. this is uh, the judge from the Citra Burnett trial, granting, he granted approval of these, uh, these settlements on May 9th. 
The settlements for the three franchisors cover claims from the cases known as Sister Burnett, Moore, and Naselic, as well as other similar home seller suits uh, nationwide. The suits uh, allege that some uh, NAR rules violate the Sherman Antitrust Act in inflating sellers' costs. The home sellers' legal filings regarding the appeal so far do not contain any arguments, but earlier legal filings offer hints. On April 10th, home sellers objected to the final approval of the franchisor settlements on the grounds that the settlements far exceed the scope of the original suits that led to the deals. And I think what they're saying there is, is, okay, we sued you, but then the settlement includes like, uh, you know, nationwide and all future uh, suits, uh, et cetera. The Moore and Sitzer Burnett cases were originally certified for a total of 24 multiple listing services. Okay, this settlement attempts to expand that class certification to more than 600 MLSs around the country. This, despite the fact that the real estate is at its base local. Many of those 600 uh, MLSs operate and enforce the rules differently from other MLSs, even within the same state, let alone across the country. It is also easy to conflate the illegal activity of these MLS is engaged in with the means by which it was accomplished. These MLSs may have used many of the same rules, but often enforced them in various ways. The participants of these MLSs took part in fixing prices for commissions, the actual, legal act, the actual illegal activity, using rules adopted for its particular MLS through they may uh, have used similar instrumentalities to do it. The South Carolina home sellers, so this is only four home sellers that are actually appealing this, right? They also object that the combined settlement amount among the three franchisors, over $200 million, $208 million, is far too low to adequately compensate for the massive number of injured parties here. Well, the thing that they don't get is, is that, you know, this has been agreed on, this has been approved by a judge, and if the, and they only have so much cash. Right. The, the the franchisors only have so much cash. So once you get to a certain point, they're out of business and 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 they, they can file bankruptcy. That doesn't protect them for any future litigation. Right. So there's a lot of things at play here. The filing stresses that the plaintiffs in the, in the more Sister Burnett cases should not be able to hin hinder other absent class members ability to try their own cases. Plaintiffs in these cases have bargained away rights of the citizens of other states in order to ensure that their own cases were settled. Their own clients received compensation at trial and their own fees at the expenses of trial paid, the filing reads, right? Uh, basically saying that the plaintiffs in the case that agreed to the settlement, they basically bargained away the rights of all the other citizens in other states to ensure that their cases were settled. And we have a statement from Michael Ketchmark uh, here in, in a few moments. They did not conduct even the barest of discovery into the conduct of this conspiracy in other states because they could not. Yet it's their contention that the $208,500,000 uh, uh, is sufficient to make whole absent class members in a radically different circumstances and radically different conspiratorial environments. The home sellers also objected to the deal's release of franchisees from liability without requiring them to pay anything to the people they allegedly harm or change anything about their practices. Let's think about that for a second. The home sellers also objected to deal's release of franchisees from liability without – so, so no more liability without requiring them to pay anything to the people they allegedly harmed, right, which basically they're being released – which are saying they're being released of liability in other states – Right, without requiring to pay any any of the people of any future suits, right, or change anything about their practices. In order to be effective, these settlement agreements should make mandatory adoption of these practice changes as a condition of owning a franchisee, a franchise, and the failure to follow these provisions, uh, a condition exposing the franchisees to revocation of the franchise. Another alternative would be an injunction that forbids the seller from making an offer of compensation to the buyer broker at all, right? And so this is, okay, this is what the DOJ wants, right? And so let me read it again. Another alternative would be an injunction that forbids 
the seller from making an offer of compensation to the buyer broker at all. So even you can't even talk about it. You Not only can you not talk about an MLS or not talk about it on your websites or marketing, you can't do it at all. My question is, is, well, can the listing broker offer the buying, the selling broker an offer of compensation? Can the listing broker, not the seller, not the seller, which by the way, that's how it is right now. Right, the seller agrees to pay the the listing broker commission. The listing broker decides, okay, I'm going to split this with the with the selling broker, so that the buyer has representation. If there's no if there's no selling broker involved, I'll keep all the money. Um, that's the way it's done. the The seller is paying this fee five percent, let's say, for the sake of argument, regardless if there's a buyer uh, a selling broker involved or not. OK, so moving for and because they documented that the seller's paying it on the HUD, that's the loophole these lawyers found. So my question is, can we just change the way that we document um, the way buyer agent uh, commissions are paid and have it coming from the listing broker out of the listing broker's commission that the seller agreed to pay the listing broker? That would be an easy fix. This alternative is proposed by the uh, Department of Justice in its statement of interest of the United States in the CELIC. Right. So so this alternative of forbidding the sellers from making any offer of compensation to the buyer broker at all is proposed by the Department of Justice in their in a statement of interest. This would stop the price fixing behavior, the actual illegal activity from from recurring. I'm still trying to connect the dots on how they feel like it's price fixing. It's just the seller agrees to pay a listing broker this to sell their property. Listing broker agrees that the in, in, uh, you know, independently they agree independently outside of what the sell you know they agree independently within their own self <laughs> decide I'm going to split this with the selling broker. Antitrust law is designed to deter bad actors. The filing ads. Um, here, by requiring the franchisees to neither pay nor change, it's unclear how these settlements further the proposes uh, of the antitrust. Finally, the home sellers protest that the deal will only be in effect for five years. Five years is simply inadequate based on these defendants' decade-long practice of fixing the commissions for both sides of the sale um, and their highly profitable results. Um, they return practice can, the return to practice can almost be guaranteed unless clear prohibitions against it are put in place for a substantial longer period of time. The history of this industry shows an incorrigible um, predilection of the fixing of commissions. The objections echo those made by another home seller who three weeks ago filed an appeal of the settlement's final approval. A home buyer also filed an appeal against the ruling. Since entering into the settlement in 2020, October 23, Remax has been committed to obtaining final court approval, releasing all U.S. Remax broker owners and affiliates from the claims in the, in the Burnett, uh, Moore, and the Sellett cases. This is a Remax spokesperson. Uh, Remax is pleased the district court granted final approval in May. That said, appeals of uh, of the older of the order are neither usual, unusual, or unexpected. They expected this to happen. Okay, Remax will continue to vigorously defend the settlement during the appeal process. Ultimately, the company believes the settlement is fair and reasonable and that the district courts should be upheld. Michael Ketchmark of Ketchmark, you know, and, and uh, McCrate, lead plaintiffs, counsel in the Citra Burnett, expressed optimism that the appeals court would reject the challenges to the deal. We have reviewed the appeals, and there's no surprises, Ketchmark told uh, Inman in a statement. We expect to win all appeals. The settlements will stand. Change is finally here. Keller Williams declined to comment. Anywhere did not respond. The appeal may delay implementation of the settlements in which Anywhere Remax Keller Williams agreed to pay, uh, you know, respectively, $83.5 million, $55 million, and $70 million. No one in the settlement cases who has made a claim or received payment until uh, any appeals have been resolved. So by making the appeal, they're prolonging getting paid out on these. And I guarantee you that's why Michael Ketchmark, you know, uh, you know, is optimistic that these uh, that that the that this appeal will be rejected. They're ready to get this over with and behind them and paid out. The franchisors are also not required to implement the business practices changes they agree to until the final appeals process. So the franchisors 
are not required to implement business practice changes they agreed to until the appeal process is over, when the settlement will become effective. These changes include no longer requiring franchisees and their affiliated agents to join or be a member of the National Association of Realtors or follow the Realtor Code of Ethics or NAR's Multiple Listing Service uh, Policy Handbook. So basically, it's not going to change when the rules come into effect for your local MLS. Okay, so boom, there it is. August 17th is still the date that you, regardless if you're with Remax anywhere, any wh whatever company you're with, you're going to have to abide by these rules when your local MLS starts to come into effect. My local MLS is August 17th. I think most MLSs are August 17th. There have been some variations of some different dates because it's not like it's mandatory August 17th. I think that I believe that they have till September 16th for everybody to fall in line. I think there are also some MLSs that have already started to implement the new uh, the new rules. Uh, my local MLS is August 17th that 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 the buyer agent commission will be removed from MLS and that we will have new forms that we don't have yet. They're still working on the new forms, the new the new agreements, right? The buyer agency agreement. Um, our, and, and obviously, we're going to have a new listing agreement, probably a new purchase agreement as well. All new forms, all new forms, right? So that is, you know, where we are on this. This is, um, you know, why they're appealing, what the process looks like, and what it means for your business is this. It don't mean much. <laughs> all the rules are going to come into effect. I want to share with you an idea here, a business model, and I really want you to think about this, Okay. But but just going back to how it affects your business, remember, the reason why we're keeping so in tune with this and making sure that we're on top of, of, of this story and, and where everything's going and any breaking news of it is not because we're worried that this is going to take our business down. Remember this. We're not becoming educated because we're out of fear. Oh, let's make sure we know that way we can foresee the, uh, you know, the cliff and that way we don't fall off. We're not caught off guard. When we go out of business, you're not going to go out of business. The, the, you have to take this and you have to see there's always two, two ways to look at something. You have to take this and realize exactly what I said in the email. This will create a newfound efficiency in your business where you're not taking on every buyer anymore. You are taking on the buyers who value you. And spending 100% of your time on dollar productive activities and any deals that you lose, because I have a feeling there's going to be some situations where you do lose some deals here and there because of this, you know, a buyer that didn't want to pay a commission, so they went straight to the listing agent, et cetera, whatever. Maybe a friend who wants a specific house, they won't offer a commission and you don't want to charge your friend or your friend won't, won't pay you. Whatever the situation is, you will more then 10x make up the difference through your newfound efficiency that you never knew you needed, right? Let's get into this business model. Now, when it comes to this NAR lawsuit, I believe that residential real estate agents can learn a lot from commercial agents. So I want you to think about this. This circle represents your business, okay? So you've got, you've got, you got, you know, this is inside your business, and then you've got everything that's outside your business. Now, what does this mean? What is inside? What is outside? Okay. So inside your business, you've got buyers. You've got sellers. You have more buyers. You have more sellers. And these are all sellers and buyers that you have found and you are working with. Okay? These are all these are all buyers and sellers that you are working with. Okay? On the outside, you've got buyers and sellers that other agents are working with. Now there's a lot more buyers and sellers in the market that you're not working with than you are working with. Okay? And I think one of the biggest problems and something we've really gotten away from over time is the fact that agents are doing 50% of their job. They're doing 50% of their job. What does that mean? It means that they go find a buyer and then they what? Wait on another agent to find the seller. 
or seller or vice versa. They find the seller and then they wait on another agent to find the buyer. Right. And originally back in the day, that's not how it was. And this is this is not how it is, ladies and gentlemen, in other countries, South Africa, um, Australia. There's a lot of other countries where you go find the seller. Right. You list a property and then you got to go find the buyer. You have to or you don't get the deal. Why? Because other agents are also listing those properties in a non-exclusive way. You may even get an exclusive right to sell. You're still going to go find the buyer. Why? Because. They don't have MLS, number one. They don't have a system like we have in the U.S. You have to, 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 When you start to really break all this down, you start to really appreciate what we have here. If you went to some of these other countries and saw what I saw, I went to Brazil. I spoke. I was the keynote speaker at, uh, our, uh, our, at Re the REMAX International Convention for Brazil, Brazil REMAX for Brazil. I was the keynote, three-day event. I went there for a whole week. I hung out. I talked to the number one agents and spent time with the entire company and, and all the heads of REMAX in Brazil. And I was shocked when I realized that they did not have an MLS. I was like, do what? And then I started to uh, ask tons of questions to understand how their business actually works. Do you know that if I were in a South Africa or a Brazil or something like that, I would crush it. Why? Because I would, I would do exactly what I'm going to tell you to do here. And that is this, create your own market, create your own market, your own market. What does that mean? It means you find the seller, then you find the buyer for that seller and vice versa. You find the buyer, and then you go find the seller for what they're looking for off market, off market. And this is how, this is how commercial real estate is done, by the way. There's not, there's not, there's, there, I mean, once it, everybody knows when a commercial deal hits the market, LoopNet, CoStar, MLS, whatever, by the time it hits that, most of the time, 90% or more of the time, that's not a deal. Because if somebody hasn't bought it off market, then it wasn't that great. And now you have to go to market to try to sell it. But most agents are only doing 50% of the job. They're getting the buyer, they're finding the seller, and then they're waiting for another agent to find the, uh, the, the counterpart. What I believe a lot of agents are going to go to, and what I think the smartest move is, is to start to work within your business. Now, if you get, if if you list something, or if you have a buyer, if you have a buyer that, and you find something on MLS through another agent, great. If you have a, if you get a listing and another agent sells it, and they find that buyer, awesome, awesome, right, great. But I would count all this outside business as bonus, and I would focus everything on, okay, what exactly, why does a seller want to sell? What are they selling, right? And who could upgrade into or downgrade into or invest into that property? Let me go find it. Let me look within my database. Let me go target properties that, that uh, it's like, okay, this person owns this type of property. They're more than likely probably going to be interested in this type of property that I have off market. Let me go talk to this potential buyer and let them know about it and see if they're interested. Let me try to connect the dots. And I think this is something we've gotten away from because we're just doing 50% because why? We've been spoiled. <laughs> we've been spoiled with the current situation, which is great. I love being spoiled. I love technology. Listen, there's no way. There's no way that I could do 100 deals a year, which is what I did every year for eight years in a row. There's no way I could do 100 deals a year as a single agent for eight years in a row without MLS, no way, no way. The systems and processes have made it possible to sell more property in less time. I believe that we can even become more efficient than that if we combine what we've been doing on MLS with the old school connecting the dots. And I believe that if you are out there looking for situations, if you watch me make calls, which I'm doing this uh, this week, a Wednesday, I've been doing it the last two Wednesdays. So I'll be live right here on YouTube at 3 p.m. Eastern this Wednesday. 
uh, making live calls. And what am I doing? I'm looking for situations to work on. I'm looking for a buyer that might want to buy something so I can turn around and go look for sellers. I'm looking for a seller that might want to sell something so I can go look for buyers. And I can find all this data and do all this within a snap of a finger. And I'm just trying to connect the dots. I'm just working to connect the dots. And in the meantime, while I'm working on the inside of my business, I'm going to have all kinds of possibilities of outside business happening automatically. And I believe that this is a business model that or you know, this is something that every every agent, I believe, needs to really think strongly about. Because if the DOJ has it their way, if the DOJ has it their way, they're going to eliminate the 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 any commission coming from the seller side they're going to eliminate it. the listing agent being able to offer it the seller being offered if they have if they get their way because i don't think they're done i think they're going to keep pushing until that is gone now do we get a different administration in the white house and all this dies down sure but i think long term is something they're going to continue to work towards Right. If they want to take us back 40 years and go back to where people didn't have representation and and agents are representing both sides and, and open up uh, the opportunity for more lawsuits and less representation in the industry. And they want to they want to go backwards instead of forwards. OK, whatever. If it, if it pads their pockets and they're happy with it, with whatever the agenda is behind why they're doing this, whatever. I can't do anything about it, but what can I do? I can go build my business, and that's exactly what you need to be doing. So I hope this video helps you um, understand what's going on with the appeal, gives you a different perspective on a business model to start thinking about. I hope all kinds of thoughts are running through your head and you can't sleep for a week because you want to go implement this stuff. I'm going to be making live calls right here Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, so tune in for that. I don't know if I'll be calling expireds or, you know, million dollar buyers. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. But in the meantime, here's a video for you right here on how to close a deal every single week. So go watch this. In the meantime, I'll see you Wednesday. And until then, go sell something.